The time has finally come to talk about a little known movie that was released in 2002, but only up until 2024, I got to see this for the first of a time and on the big screen. And yes, we're talking about Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the channel and thank you so much for taking your time to check out this video. I really do appreciate it. Stick around at the end and I'll also link my reviews for Star Wars Episode 1 of Phantom Menace and along with a live stream spoiler discussion I did on that movie. So yeah, I've never seen Attack of the Clones. I've seen all the other entries and you might be wondering, well Mike, why did you do that? I, basically growing up, around this time when this was released, I was 12 years old. I just never saw this in cinemas. And now, as my local cinema is showing every instalment like once per week, last week being Phantom Menace, this week Attack of the Clones, and then of course coming up is Revenge of the Sith, I wanted to check this out on the biggest screen possible. So this is directed by George Lucas, it's written also by him, alongside Jonathan Hales, and we've got a stellar star-studded cast like Ewan McGregor, Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, Samuel L. Jackson, Christopher Lee, and many, many more. And if you're wondering, well, Mike, what is the story of Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones in case you've never seen this out in? And I'm not going to go into spoilers here, but basically, Obi Wan is tracking down an assassin who is trying to get rid of a Padme Amadilla of the name of Jango Fett. But while he's trying to hunt down this assassin, he discovers a sinister plan to destroy the Republic. And I'll leave it there. Now, going into this, I've heard a lot of mixed things from a lot of people about this movie. Some people absolutely love this movie. Anthony Perez. Some people aren't really a fan of this movie. Probably quite a few people. And I just went in open-minded. I knew about certain elements that happen here, but that's kind of about it. And of course, working for Lego back in 2013, up until 2016, I'm very familiar with a lot of the sets that was released around this time to celebrate this movie. And leaving the movie, guys, I'm going to be honest, I actually didn't mind it. I actually don't think this is a terrible Star Wars movie. Now, I'm sure there's going to be people that disagree. And if you disagree... Absolutely fine. I've got no qualms with that whatsoever. It's always great to have a civil and healthy discussion. So if you like this movie, if you're in the middle or you just flat out dislike it, let me know down below in the comment section. So, of course, we can have a civil, healthy conversation. But I'm not a Star Wars nerd. I'm not a Star Wars geek. I've never read like the comic books. I never really played many of the video games. I remember playing the Phantom Menace game back in the day. But I'm just not into the Star Wars lore like big diehard fans are, so I'm coming at this as like a casual fan of Star Wars. Firstly, let's get into some positives. Now, this is set 10 years after The Phantom Menace, and I do like the story progression. It definitely progresses quite some time from that first out, which of course you're expected to do that, but the progression is actually well done in terms of what it's going to lead to in the third installment of course episode three so going and visiting this one on the big screen and now having that kind of picture of what will happen in that third out and i was like okay well of course this makes sense but i was like wow it is really well done it sets up a lot of stuff with Count Dooku, uh, Obi-Wan, also Anakin Skywalker appeared by this time by Hayden Christensen. We haven't got Jake Lloyd reprising the role. Of course, very sad story will happen with Jake Lloyd. My thoughts are definitely always going to be with him and his family. So, yeah, we've got Hayden Christensen at the helm here. And we're going to touch on Hayden Christensen. Don't you worry. But going back to the positives. Again, I like the story progression. There's definitely some really impressive visuals. And there's some really cool action sequences. Um, ones that I was like, wow, this is awesome. Even watching this, like, 22 years later. Some of it still holds up. Some, yeah, well, again, we're all going to get to that. But there is a lot of impressive visuals. There's some really cool moments especially with Django Fret played by Tamura Morrison who in future played in the Book of Boba Fett series he played Boba Fett so it's pretty cool that he's uh 
you know, the dad and then eventually the son of Jango Fett. So I, I really like that. I thought that's cool. Jango Fett's a cool character. Um, and I really like, like the clone army that we see here. Again, it's just mainly the story progression that I was a huge fan of. I, I thought it was told really well. It got to the point where it acknowledged the Phantom Menace, including a Qui-Gon Jinn reference, which... I do appreciate Qui-Gon is awesome and I just love the fact that even with the Sith and establishing our bad guys right we do this in a really cool way with Christopher Lee as Count Dooku and I think the guy was great he doesn't get a lot of screen time but when he's on the screen I was kind of rooting for him. I mean, I probably shouldn't be, but I was kind of rooting for him, right? And the final finale lightsaber battle is awesome. Really, really one of the biggest highlights for me so far. And I like that we have a great lightsaber battle in Phantom Menace. We have one here, and I know in the next movie, when we get to that, and I will review that on the channel, I do remember an awesome lightsaber battle there as well. Well, two of them, personally. How can we not talk about the John Williams score, which, as always, is impressive. It was also nice to get a little hint of Duel of the Fates, but I do feel as if part of that Duel of the Fates little homage didn't really fit the scene in too much particular. And final positive is I think the performances for some part is pretty good. Like I think uh, Ewan McGregor definitely gets more of a chance to showcase uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi as he slowly starts to get into this uh, character. Mace Windu, of course. Samuel L. Jackson is great. Christopher Lee before. But to get into the negatives, uh, this is where the movie faltered for me. Now, I think this is always going to be a talking point, but we've got to talk about the romance between Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amadilla. And that is... Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman. Now, I've documented on this channel, I'm not a fan of Natalie Portman, right? I never have been, but I can accept her and she's in a movie role, right? Now, when it comes to this outing, however, the romance is dead. It is, there's, it's, it's like watching two tumbleweeds trying to match up, right? The romance was just bad. Now, I'm not exactly going to blame the actors on this part because at the end of the day, they're just reading the script and dialogue that's given to them by George Lucas, who is very by the script. If it's on the page, you're not going to deviate from what is on there. So the blame can't necessarily go all on to them too um, because at the end of the day, they're just delivering what they're given. But it's not great. It, it really isn't. There's cheesy. There's a lot of cheesy lines that's been memed and... I know a lot of people just isn't a fan of the romance, and, and I definitely agree with them. What I would have liked to have had, maybe instead of a few romance scenes that I think we may get a bit one too many that we really don't need, they could have given a little bit more character exploration. In particular, probably Django Fett. We could have done with an extra scene or two with Django Fett because he's a cool-ass character. But we get it on this romance, and the romance is just dead, guys. It's It's not good. It really, really isn't good. But besides that romance, the other part of this movie that hasn't aged well is some of the visual effects. Now, it's a little bit hard to critique because at this point, it's 22 years on from the original time this was released. I know at the big time uh, from Anthony Perez and researching this, I know that this was big groundbreaking for visual effects at the time. And of course, whenever you're going to introduce some brand new effect, the first movie that gets released, it's going to look great at the time. But then on like future rewatches, it's not going to look as good. And of course, over time, other studios and movies are going to develop that even better. So the visual effects don't always hold up. There's a lot of scenes I was like, you can tell they're clearly on a green screen. Um... And it just didn't really tally up sometimes the emotions that they're trying to showcase to that particular scene. And the two big negatives, to be honest, on my part, um, they didn't take me completely out of the movie. But there was definitely two big factors that kind of deterred it a little bit for me. But overall, guys, for me, this was a fun out one. Is it better than The Phantom Menace? No. Uh, is it the worst Star Wars movie ever? I mean, hey, you're going to have to stick around on the channel while I cover every single one and see if it gets that rain. But for now, I'm going to give Attack of the Clones between a two and a half and a three stars 
out of five. Thank you guys for checking out this review. I really do appreciate it, but I also do appreciate all my patrons. Uh, you can sign up today for only £2 per month. Links down below in the description box. Big thanks to all these awesome legends. And as I mentioned in my introduction, if you click over here, you can check the two videos of mine where I covered The Phantom Menace. See what my thoughts are on those ones. Till next time, I'll see you guys. I'll be seeing you later.